Hello, hello. This is the P852B from Rake Knives, the review of that knife. So this is a larger everyday carry style folder with some pretty obvious features in it. You see that on the blade and that on the handle. Um, it is a very different knife uh, to what I'd usually have. And the reason I have it is because Rake have sent it to me to review. I guess they saw my spruiking of the uh, P801SF. Lots of people have bought this and been quite happy with it. Um, for a very budget knife, it is a very good knife. Uh, this is rather different, as you can see. It's a different purpose, different level of utility. Um, but yeah, they've sent that to me to review, so take that what it is. It's probably the best fit and finished one. Um, all that stuff that they, you, you know, if you were sending one of your products for someone to review, what would you do exactly? So just assume all that's going on, but uh, it's certainly not a... Um, uh, it doesn't mean I'm going to give it a full marks or give it a great rundown. By any means, it's going to get the full honest treatment. As I said, I would do. So, um, just as a bit of housekeeping aside, note, and this is not to do with this knife at all. This is more for the um, for the other knife folks, who's, um, the knife makers who might uh, watch my channel. Um, I won't be doing any more of these sorts of things where the company sends me a knife to review because I just find that um, uh, just isn't the way that I like to work particularly. Whether or not there's a stated deadline or not, I, f I impose one on myself and I rush through things and I don't like to. So that's why I kind of made a point of making sure I gave this one a good couple of months before I reviewed it. Because I'm winding this aspect of the channel down, the um, donated reviews. And that's from people as well. From this point on, most of the knives you see in the channel are going to be ones that I've sought out myself. So I feel like I'll be able to make, I'll just have a better time making videos. And hey, as I always say, this is for my fun and all this other stuff is just a, a happy coincidence that you all enjoy it as well. Anyway, to the review, let's look at it on the table. So looking at the specs here, we've got a blade of about 10 centimeters long. The whole handle is about oh, 21 centimeters long. Um, it's a larger size knife. Let's show it against some other knives that are also large. So we've got the Paramilitary 2 here, very similar size to the Paramilitary 2. We've got the Spyderco Spidey Chef here. Very similar size to the Spyderco Spidey Chef. Let's look at the Spyderco Caribbean. A little bit smaller than the Spyderco Caribbean. And then we'll look at a, a, a pretty recognizable knife, the Ontario Rat Number 2 in D2. And it's a fair bit bigger than the Rat 2 in D2. So should give you some idea of what we're looking at here. Uh, the blade is relatively stout as well. It's quite a thick blade. Um, I'd put it at about the 3.5 millimeters or so. It is definitely a fairly robust uh, knife. Looking at the mechanisms involved, you've got a ball bearing pivot, you've got a liner lock that is a fairly thick liner lock, so it's a pretty um, bulky old liner lock there. You've got a, a single side tip up only right hand carry pocket knife, so this is definitely a right hander's knife only, really. Um, and then you've got a, um, a large backspace construction. You've got this additional lock to lock your lock, so to speak, so you can slide that forward. And now if you are concerned about sort of using this and maybe talking your hand around the handle, you don't have to worry about the lock unlocking because while you can push it a little tiny bit, you can't push it to the point where it's gonna unlock and let the blade close until you slide this back as well. So that is the mechanisms involved. Uh, the materials involved, you've got G10, black ridged G10 as the handle material, and you've got 14C28N steel for the blade material. So that is what we're looking at overall. We've got a lanyard hole, you've got um, you know, pretty decent action. It's of course a flipper mechanism and being a rake, I've never had a problem with these flipping. They're always put together well enough that they don't have any flipping problems whatsoever. So let's talk about what I like and what I don't like as much about the blade. What I like, cutting performance. Look, in a world without sharpening, the recurve knife blades would be that be what every knife was made of because there would be no reason to not make a recurve because they plain and simply do cut a whole lot better through most things even with food even on surfaces when you've got a knife designed or a blade designed like this you still get a lot of belly to use against cutting boards and that sort of thing and then when you're holding things in the air and cutting them this very purposeful recurve here does exactly what it's supposed to and bites and sort of uh, guides the material around giving you extra cutting force as you pull the knife through here point of pressure being right here 
This is a rope cutting beast, so a really, really excellent cutting knife. It's a nice broad face of the blade. So again, look at it next to, say, the paramilitary too. Another kind of pretty broad blade, but with a more the clipped off point gives you a little bit less broadness here. Um, when you have even the thicker blades and you keep them tall and you keep the grinds quite high, you get some really good slicing performance. And this is a really good cutting blade. One of the better ones I've had recently. It's a um, uh, we're really well... Um, uh, I mean, and this is the thing, I, I, I'm not sure if it's just the fit and finish that they've done done for me because of this one, but this came with almost a mirror polished 18 degree per side bevel. So a really, really well sharpens knife as well that really does cut and perform excellently. So it's probably my favorite thing about the blade when it comes to actually sticking it in things and tearing and cutting and slashing and slicing. It does really well and it cuts a lot like a bigger knife would. And that is just because of that, uh, that recurve there. Recurves get extra mileage with cutting and it is done very, very well. Uh, another thing that is really good about it, I think I alluded to this before, is the general construction and um, you know, fit and finish and maintenance of the knife. Uh, it's all pretty well done, like you don't need to tighten anything up when you get it, or at least I didn't. Nothing has come loose. There's been no problems with it whatsoever. I haven't had to disassemble it, I haven't had to clean it. Uh, and yeah, it's seen some dirt time for sure. It has actually been used quite extensively. So um, overall, it's a really well put together knife as well. And I do really enjoy uh, rakes for that exact reason. I remember the first time I got this knife here and the first time I flipped it and had a really good look at it. This edge is mine, by the way. It's not usually that hideous. Um, and you look at the centering and you, you look at the action and you look at how well everything fits together and you give it all a bit of a shake and a jiggle. The tolerance is really tight on rakes and this one continues that trend, absolutely. Um, another thing, the, surf the surface of the G10 here is nice and grippy. This isn't really covered in jimping basically anywhere. The, um, the lock uh, bar has some just for accessibility, but um, the grip here is done through this uh, sculpting of this G10 handle. So it is kind of like 3D milled G10. It's definitely got a surface going over like that. And then um, if your hand fits this handle perfectly, which mine doesn't, but if yours did, you would find this an excellent knife to take uh, with my friend Nick to the Vaseline factory and um, cut things all day because yeah, it's, it's not going anywhere. So that's really well done, a G10 as well. It looks quite nice. It's a quite a nice looking knife overall, I think. Um, you know, if you're in th into the market of something that is still just black and silver, it's got a pretty neat pattern to it as well. So very, very well done in terms of its construction, its general appearance and design and whatnot. All right, so in terms of things that I don't love about the knife, well, let's start with the most pressing thing for me is the handle. My hand is just a little bit too big for it. So when I do a full on grip with all my knuckles lined up, this finger here is just riding on this part of the handle. So that is something that is unavoidable when you make handles with two enclosure points. Uh, I guess you do that for, you know, when it does fit the hand, it fits very well. Uh, and it's true, like this would be a phenomenally grippy knife if it fit my hand well. And I mean, I guess it still is. It just isn't that comfortable on me. It, look, if you have a hand that, so I'm using my ruler here, when you, when you clench your fist, if your fist is between your fingers about eight centimeters across, then this might be a little bit too small for you. But if you, um, and that's kind of, that's the distance from this knuckle to this knuckle. Um, but you know, if you're anywhere underneath, underneath that, then it's probably going to be absolutely fine. So probably not a point for you whatsoever. Uh, the pocket clip is a little bit shallow for my liking and a little bit devoid of ramp for my liking as well. Doesn't exactly slide into the pocket super easily. And there's a bit of grippy G10 underneath it, which kind of hinders that as well. Once it is in the pocket, it's certainly not going anywhere, but I would have loved to see them reverse it for one and then deep carry it a little bit like these great clips you get on the other rake knives. So I would have much preferred that for example. So there you go. Um, this here, this lock that locks the lock, I always kind of see this as something that I can more, more, I'm more likely to accidentally use when I'm holding the knife like this, accidentally slide it forward, and then be all like, why is it not locking? Rather than something I'm gonna say, well, oh, that was lucky that I had that lock. Um, because it's one of those things, that, it's an idea that maybe is the answer to a question that no one's asked yet, but Hey, um, as I said at the start, if you are someone whose hand talks on your knife and goes around it sometimes, and you are worried about accidentally opening up, then hey, it might solve that problem for you. But there you go. So I'm not super stoked on that, but um, it's you know not do, not really doing any harm apart from me accidentally setting it off every now and then. So there's that too. So not a huge amount to dislike on the knife. Those are the only things I'd say know about. Um, just some other stuff though, other things that aren't neither here nor there, 
<laughs> it's bad grammar, I know that aren't neither, that are neither here or there. Uh, for, a start, <coughs> for a start, you're looking at this, it's a recurve knife. That means recurve sharpening issues. Um, you're gonna have to have a more tailored system or learn to use the corner of a stone or Spartaco Sharp Maker or something like that. For me and my KME system, I do have a round rod that I can use. It doesn't go up to the grits that I like though, so I always prefer not to get a recurve blade. But as I said earlier, they are truly masters of cutting. And if you never had to sharpen a knife, then recurve would be ideal a lot of the time. But there you go. Uh, so there's that. Um, it's a bit of a heavier knife in the pocket, but then it's not really selling itself to be an ultra light style knife. It's um, definitely got a little bit of bulk to it, a little bit of roundness to it, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's not tiny, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, it's certainly not a negative, it just is what it is. Um, so looking at it next to, say, the, let's look at it next to the Ontario Rat 2, you know, much bigger footprint, um, much sort of big rounder knife. Take out much more space in your pocket, even compared to, like, say, the Paramilitary 2, um, which is a Spyderco. It's about as bulky, if not a little bit bulkier than that, in terms of this dimension. And when you roll it onto its side, it's a bit sort of fatter and chubbier, even still. So, uh, just a bit of a bigger knife. But again, not going to dock it, you know, points or whatever for that. Just is what it is. The steel is 14C28N, which is a fine steel. It's right in the middle. Uh, I wouldn't want to be paying much more than this for it. So, this is 65 Australian dollars. I've seen on our dealers probably about 40 US dollars I'd imagine over there in the States um, so yeah it's about fine for that level of uh, cost but um, yeah not you wouldn't want it to if it was a cheap really cheap knife like this which is about 40 Australian dollars then yeah it's a home run it's a brilliant steel it's better than all the competitor steels but at this price you're starting to get knives that are you know either wearing the same, it's not a remarkable thing about the knife anymore. It's, knives are gonna be either wearing the same or a slightly different or even maybe better steel. So just something to keep in mind there, not terrible. Uh, in my testing, you're looking at it holding you know, for about as long as VG10. That's what, I've had, that's what I've had sort of pretty consistently proven in my rope cutting tests at the very least, whether you give them any time of the day or not. That is up to you, my friend. So that's all I think you really need to know about the rake knife. Um, it's just not for me. It's not my kind of knife. I would never choose to buy a type of knife like this. And I guess this is harkening back to that thing I was saying earlier, how I'm probably not going to do this as much anymore because I think I enjoy this hobby better. And I mean like the knife nerd hobby better. If I just scout my own knives and choose them myself and, uh, and just buy them myself and then, uh, yeah, I feel a bit more invested in the review as well. So this is definitely not for me, but I can say it's very well put together. It's a, it's got a good action. It's gonna cut really, really well if you need something that cuts like this. It's gonna be a good heavy cutter for a long time. This does a fair bit of the work for you, this recurve here. Um, and overall, if you have a slightly smaller hand than me, you're probably gonna find it highly ergonomic and uh, very grippy as well. So um, apart from it being pretty lefty unfriendly and just not the best in the pocket, there's really not too many like objectively bad things to say about it. It's just a, uh, a matter of taste and it is not really with my taste or not, but um, uh, not really with my taste at all, but it may certainly be with yours. So that's about all I've got to say about the Rake P852B. One other thing, Rake, I wish you'd give all your knives names. Um, they would seem like they had much more, um, I'm gonna say provenance, like um, more of a story or more of more character at least or something than just numbers. So I would definitely suggest that. I think that'd take off a little bit better. It's so hard. I've had this knife for two months and I've just, I barely get this. I barely get to remember it. So there you go as well. And anyway, guys, um, at any rate, guys, I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.